Hey, what is going on all you fantastic people and fellow Fallout fans? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to talk about how something game-changing is coming to Fallout 76. What I mean by game-changing is that recently Bethesda Game Studios put out Fallout 76 Inside the Vault Patch 9 Preview. And they showed off some pretty amazing features that we have long been waiting for, such as player vending machines. And they also showed legendary exchange machines as well. They talk about some survival scoreboard updates and as well as some weapon adjustments and other things as well. Now, I'm not going to get too much into the weapon adjustment stuff, but in this video, I will be reading to you guys and we'll be reading together that Fallout 76 Inside the Vault Patch 9 Preview. This has some pretty awesome, amazing stuff in it. I think it's going to be game changing for the better and it's going to increase the quality of life for all us Fallout 76 players very much. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So the article starts off by saying, this week we're sharing a preview of a few of the highlights coming with Patch 9, including details on player vending machines, legendary exchange machines, a new survival beta scoreboard stat, and balance changes. Read on to learn more about these upcoming features and changes, and be sure to keep an eye out for the full patch notes when we release Patch 9 on May 7th. Then it says player vending machines with patch 9 we're going to add personal vending machines that aspiring entrepreneurs around appalachia can use to turn their camp into makeshift markets these vending machines will also allow you to turn a profit by selling items you've made or found during your adventures you can also visit other dwellers camps to pick up new gear for your collection and it's followed by this lovely screenshot here that looks pretty interesting and neat it goes on to say once you build a vending machine you can assign items to it directly from your stash and choose the cap prices you like buyers to pay for them items you place in your vending machine will remain in your stash but they will also display a new vending icon next to their name so that it's easy to identify what you've marked for sale at a glance you receive you will receive a notification whenever a buyer snatches up one of your wares caps from your sale minus a nominal fee of 10 percent to maintain a healthy in-game economy will be added to your cap balance of course to run a successful business you'll need to advertise when you build a power when you build and power a vending machine, your camp location will appear to all players on the map as long as you aren't currently wanted. When others hover over your camp on the map, they'll see your name and player icon as well as the number of types of items you have marked for sale. If you got lots of goods or rare items and set fair prices, your shop will likely have a few new visitors. We can't wait to see how your camp and trading evolve once we get vending machines into your hands and we hope you'll share your thoughts with us once they go live next week so player vending is pretty awesome it's something that we've been waiting for a long time for and something i think the game has needed for a very long time up to this point there has really been no way to trade with other players uh perfectly if you will and player vending kind of fills that void sure you could trade with players normally walk up to each other so on and so forth but usually that's not too fun too interesting and it people you know want to buy stuff that you don't want to sell and then you want to buy stuff that they don't want to sell but with player vending you're going to know what they want to sell and what they don't want to sell and you know you pay your caps and stuff like that which i think is really cool i think it's a lot better than you know trusting somebody Hopefully this way people won't get scammed as well. You know, there's a lot of scams going on out there when it comes to trading in Fallout 76. So maybe that will solve that big issue as well. Them taking a 10% to maintain a healthy in-game economy. I understand why they do that. Maybe it's, you know, so some duper doesn't, you know, dupe a bunch of things and make, you know, like a million caps. They'll make 900,000. Uh, you know, they're, they're putting a 10% tax on it for, for some reason. And that's kind of curious to me. I don't know why you just don't get 100% of it. But maybe it's because, you know, they have to do stuff on their part, on their server end, and they have to put work into it, which makes sense why they would tax us 10% caps, if you will, even though they really can't do anything with caps. So, uh, yeah, I think it's just a good way to keep a healthy in-game economy. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. 
Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for player vending, and I think it's a huge game-changing feature coming to Fallout 76 um, very soon here. So going on to legendary exchange machines. The purveyor is a new mole miner vendor who will be making her way to the wasteland later this month, but she doesn't deal in caps. When she opens the doors to her shop, you'll be able to exchange a new type of currency called legendary script for legendary items. To help you prepare for the purveyor's arrival, we're adding legendary exchange machines that you can use to break down your unwanted legendary items and turn them into script. And then it has a picture here, and I picture this is one of those uh, machines that it's talking about where you could break down your legendary items and get this stuff known as script. So it goes on to say, once patch 9 is live, you'll be able to find legendary exchange machines at train stations around Appalachia. Load up your inventory with the legendary items you no longer want to keep, place them in the machine, and then collect your script. The higher the star rating of your legendary items, the more script you will receive, the more legendary script you have when the purveyor arrives, the more legendary weapons and armor you will be able to buy. We will have more details to share on the purveyor next week. We hope the addition of exchange machines will help you free up some storage space and fill your wallet with script while she travels to the surface. Um, so this is pretty cool as well in my opinion. This is actually really, really awesome. I can't tell you how many times I found a legendary weapon that I don't want, that I don't like. You know, I have no room for it in my camp, so my only option is just to obviously throw it out. Um, but now we have the option to be able to save those legendary items, then scrap those legendary items, get script, and then when the vendor gets there, you will be able to buy stuff with that script, which I think is really cool. I think this is a good way to uh, fix the legendary weapon issue where, you know, it often drops stuff you don't like, you can't use, or sucks. You know, it's hard to find somebody to trade it with because everybody else already has their favorite weapon, and so on and so forth. I think this is a really nice game-changing feature that's going to improve the quality of life for all Fallout 76 players. Um, solely based on the fact that we can now choose the legendary items that we want as long as we have, you know, the quote-unquote money to, to pay for them, if you will. Going on to uh, survival scoreboard updates. This is a pretty big one. I'm going to cover this real quick, so here we go. Previously, we asked you to weigh in on a poll to determine your favorite survival mode scoreboard stat so that we could make adjustments based on the community's preferences. The results are in. Players killed receive the most votes with longest life and XP gang tying for second, and enemies killed coming in third. While players killed was the clear victor at 63%, there were enough votes in the other categories that we wanted to create a new stat that takes more than one into account when ranking player performance in survival mode. With patch 9, we're planning to implement survival score a new as the new primary stat for the scoreboards. Here's how it will work. You will receive one survival point for every experience point you earn while playing in the survival beta. The total number of survival points you currently have will determine your placement on the scoreboards. The three players with the highest survival scores will be highlighted on the map. On death, your survival score will be reset to zero. When you kill another player, 75% of the survival points they had prior to death will be added to your survival score. For example, if your survival score is 500 and you kill players whose score is 1000, they will lose all their points and you will receive 750 for a new survival score of 1250. It goes on to say, thank you for your feedback and for participating in our poll. We believe survival score will offer more well-rounded way to evaluate your feats while also giving PvP focused players a clear way to rise through the rankings and chase the excitement of fending off challengers. So I think this is really good, especially if you play survival mode. I think this is much nicer than time survive and stuff like that because I remember I would leave the vault in survival mode. 30 minutes, I would be, you know, number two or one on the scoreboard, and then I get killed by every goober on the map, and, and it would really suck because, you know, I'm a low level, I don't have anything, I want to start in survival mode, I want to play survival mode, sure, that's not the way I should do it, but, you know, I'm not the smartest man in the world, so I do it that way because I, I have fun with it that way, um, but yeah, 
then you, you know, have not so heavily focused PvP players as well who just want the survival aspect of it, maybe make it harder, maybe they want those once in a while encounters. Um, they don't, they're not going out particularly looking for a fight or anything like that. I think it's really nice for those people. I think this separates the people in survival mode who kind of want to PvP and the people who really want to PvP. And I think that's really cool how um, players with the highest survival scores will be highlighted on the map, if you will. Which which I think is a good fix uh, for the survival score uh, board update rather than time and stuff like that. So going on, um, it talks about weapons adjustments. Now, I'm not going to read this since it's really not uh, anything too crazy. I will go through uh, like the basic stuff, but I'm not going to read it super in-depth. So if you want to read it for yourself, pause it here and uh, definitely read it for yourself if this is something you are into. So it talks about weapons adjustments. It talks about plasma weapon buffs. Base plasma gun damage increased to 30%. Base enclave plasma gun damage increased by 10% to 30%. It talks about explosive shotgun bug fixes. Uh, it says we are also implementing fixes for a pair of bugs affecting shotguns that have the explosive legendary effect. The first was causing them to deal double damage rather than 20% increase the explosive effect is intended to provide. The second issue was causing the pip boy to display lower damage numbers than explosive shotguns were actually dealing to your targets. While these aren't true balance changes, it's important that we address these issues to bring more consistency to both the displayed and actual damage output of explosive shotguns. And then talks about flamer and cryolator ammo crafting. It says, Flamer Fuel created via crafting increased from 5 to 20. Cryo uh, created via cryo cells created via crafting increased from 15 to 25. And that's all good if you use energy weapons or if you use the explosive shotgun. Those are really important changes that needed to be made. I've seen a lot of people complaining about it on Reddit. And I'm really glad that Bethesda Game Studios fixed it. Going on. Last but not least, display cases are coming. It says, as some of you may already be aware, we're planning to add display cases so that you can show off some of the items you've collected, such as weapons, bobbleheads, and magazines in your camp. We're excited to bring this uh, feature to the game, but it's going to take a little more time and testing to make sure we get it right. As a result, display cases are going to arrive a few weeks after we release Patch 9. We know many of you are waiting to be able to flaunt your collections and we appreciate your patience. And then it says, we hope you've enjoyed getting an early look at some of the changes coming with our next update. As with previous updates, we're planning to post the full patch notes when patch nine goes live on May 7th. Don't forget, we're streaming Fallout 76, blah, 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 blah. Until next time, uh, we'll see you in the wasteland. So uh, yeah, if you wanna read this for yourself, link will be down in the description below to this Inside the Vault letter. But yeah, a lot of cool game-changing stuff coming on the way. A lot of improvements of life for all the Fallout 76 players. I'm pretty sure there are a lot more than... I'm pretty sure there's a lot more coming in Patch 9 than this. just this. I'm pretty sure this is just the major stuff, but I'm excited for it nonetheless, and I know many of you are. If you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to drop that like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. Anyways, I love each and every single one of you. I hope to see you guys right back here in the next video. But until then, remember to stay freaky and bye-bye everybody. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.